Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, welcome to the channel. A lot of you guys were asking how the DPF system works. That's the front of the truck. The back of the truck. So, I'm going to get into showing you and explaining to you how this DPF system works. So follow along and let's get into it. Alright, so, how does this massive exhaust system work? Let's get into it, and I'll show you. So the 6.7 diesel, uh, it allows the turbocharger inlet pipes to transport exhaust gas from the exhaust manifold to the turbocharger. And the turbocharger is way up there on top of the engine, okay? Uh, the, ex the expansion joint, there's an expansion joint at the turbo uh, inlet pipe. It accommodates for thermal growth. Um, it's pretty cool how it's designed. Um, the, the upper and lower exhaust down pipes deliver exhaust gas from the turbo to the catalyst and the particulate filter assembly. This is the particulate filter. This is the catalyst. Okay. Uh, the catalytic converter basically is a ceramic uh, catalytic converter which oxidizes hydrocarbons, hydrocarbons and generates heat for the DPF to do a regeneration. It, the DPF filter is silicone carbide wall flow and it traps particulates inside here soot all that good stuff um, The soot gathers in the system up here. It's like a honeycomb inside here kind of like a catalytic converter and it begins to restrict and The filter needs to be burned out or cleaned. It can be cleaned in two different ways passive regeneration and active Both of those occur automatically You can also do a OCC, uh, OCR, excuse me, operator command regeneration where you go through the dashboard. So how does it know when it's full? Uh, there's a pressure sensor. Pressure sensor. So this pressure sensor better be close to that pressure sensor up there. If not, it's telling you that it's full. And then it kind of gives you a reading on how full it is. Um, passive regeneration and active regeneration, uh, that, like I said, they both occur automatically. The selective reduction catalyst improves the exhaust emissions and fuel efficiency by injecting reductant into the exhaust system. This is the inducted, reductant injector, also known as the DEF fluid. It's got that high pressure line. <clears throat> Comes across, goes through there, goes to that DPF. So it injects this way after the filter goes into the exhaust stream and then goes into here and it's a 32 and a half percent solution of urea in deionized water a lot of people didn't know that at the inlet there's a port for the reductant also referred to uh, for the injector that's the injector that I showed you right there um, it has a great diffuser inside here it's it's at an angle it looks almost like a cheese grater okay and a twist mixer. So when it's introduced into the exhaust stream, you can see that angle right there. And it introduces here, comes in, and twists around. Uh, it atomizes in the grate diffuser and mixes even, e evenly with the exhaust gases that are coming through uh, in the twist mixer. Uh, in the twist mixer, which is in here. Uh, during the time, the heat of the exhaust gases causes the urea or the reductant to split into carbon dioxide, CO2, as it's coming through, okay? And ammonia, as the ammonia and the nitrogen oxides pass over the catalyst inside here, there's a chemical reaction that takes place, and the ammonia and the nitrous oxide are converted into nitrogen and water. It's right out the tailpipe, okay? So that's, that's how it happens, but how does it burn this out? It burns us out by the exhaust temperature has to be hot. And then as the exhaust valves open, it dumps fuel into there. The heat from that will ignite the fuel, getting it hot enough to burn out the soot inside here, which sends it through here. The reductant goes through here, mixes all that stuff up, goes through here, has the chemical reaction, turns it into water. So going back to the regeneration cycle, you got the passive regeneration, which it actually occurs naturally. Uh, normal engine operating temperature during the regeneration the exhaust temperatures 
are at an appropriate level where some of the soot can be reduced or oxidized uh, cleaning the filter. And uh, active regeneration is initiated by the PCM. It will occur when there is not enough passive regeneration occurring due to the vehicle dry patterns, short trips, stuff like that. In active uh, regeneration, the DPF filter is cleaned by raising the exhaust temperature, like I told you earlier. It raises the exhaust temperature to the point where the soot is burned away. After it's burned off, the exhaust temperature and back pressure restrictions fall back to normal level. So, and then the other way, like I told you, is OCR, operator command, where you go through the dashboard. So it dumps the fuel in, gets it hot, burns all the soot out of here. Here's your pressure sensor. It all comes in through here, goes into this filter, it's, it, it injects the diesel exhaust fluid, which is urea and distilled water, and goes through here, twists, mixes, just kind of re refresh. The carbon dioxide and the nitrogen pass over the catalyst, and it is actually turned it into nitrogen oxides, and it's converted into nitrogen and water. So that's how the DPF system works. And then it goes all the way out the tailpipe. So during the regen process, see those, those holes right there? That actually allows airflow to keep the exhaust tips cool back there. So I hope you learned a little something, something about the DPF system. It's pretty cool how it works. It just basically burns the soot out, squirts urea and distilled water, basically ammonia has a chemical reaction, sends it out the tailpipe, turning it into basically water vapor. So, appreciate it, you guys. Hope you stick around for more. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one.